Good morning, everybody. I believe this is the first update I'm doing since my urban worm bag collapsed. I should call it the suburban worm bag because I live in the suburbs. And we're going to check in on them today. I'm pretty sure they're out of food and I'm pretty sure they need moisture. What you see sprouting are a bunch of the um, French style green beans. And I'm actually going to save a few of these because I didn't get them in my garden yet. So I am going to take a few as we dig through. I think what I'll do is we'll start in the middle so I can sort of zoom in because I like to do that for you. And then um, let me grab a couple of these out and then I'll show you the worms and then they're going to need a whole bunch of food. And I'm glad that these are climbing beans because look how long they are. <laughs> so the, they'll, they'll readily go grab onto the trellis that I have outside for them. And I'll tell you, if you want to start seeds, there is no better place than in a worm bin. Seeds seem to sprout like faster than anywhere else. And you can see at the bottom here, you can still see the bean on it. And actually, the, the bean and the pea pod, the bean pod itself, that's what this is. And then you can see the bean and the roots. And I'm always so impressed at the roots that are generated by worm casting. But if I shake it off, nothing stays on. But you won't get this root in a little bit of seed starting mix. All right. So no need to linger at that. Let me just grab out. Again, there's probably... A seed pot at the bottom of all this somewhere and these ones are a little bit lighter yellow of course because they were down deeper plants are yellow without light and that's another reason I'm wanting to get these out because plants can sprout well without light but they don't grow well without light at least not green beans there's a few sh shade loving shade tolerant plants but the urban worm bag is not the place to grow things long term so all right that's good enough i got my i got my fill so um this is a leaf off of an aloe plant that broke off so threw that in here i was seeing if they were going to eat it i should probably tear it open a little bit so they can get at the aloe juice inside all right well, let's take a look and see um what they're doing so if you remember when this collapsed, the bin was completely empty and I had to scoop all the worms up and I decided to start it over. Okay, this is entertaining. This plastic, I'm sure, well, I'm not sure, but I believe any of you that have bought the cucumbers, this is a, it was a long English cucumber and they come individually wrapped in plastic. I remember when I put it in here because I froze it, um, can see, they'll still see the tag on here. I froze it and it went rotten in my fridge and I it was so mushy I decided to freeze it in the plastic and when I wanted to give it to the worms I couldn't get the plastic off so I ripped it and they must have ate it completely from out, out of the package because there's not even the sign of the skin left. There's nothing left. Well, that's what that is. Um, as I was saying, you know, when when the urban bag crashed and had to be rebuilt, I decided to put nothing other than Af my African nightcrawlers in here and they're not all in here yet because I'm insane. Okay, These are a few snow peas I put in like a day ago that I picked from my garden. I've got so many. Um, that's what These are the dwarf gray sugar snap peas. I didn't break them and freeze them. But I took all the contents from the Urban Worm Bag, put it in a giant container that I still have, and started to individually separate the worm species. So I could put all the worms from my giant mixed bin, which was this, back into individual bins. Now I'm sure I'm gonna keep some of them separate because it will make me mad if I have to go through 20 pounds of worms. And it's about, you know, oh, 40,000 worms or so. Um, maybe more depending on the breed. Coffee filter I'm ripping up here. I finally got the um, unbleached 
paper-based coffee filters. So they go in with the coffee. So I've added as many of the Africans as I could have um, separated so far. And here's a good handful of them. This bin is pretty dry right now. It's been pretty ignored. Um, so, but the worms are still looking really good. I'm seeing a lot of youngins. And it wasn't the youngins that went in here because the young the young worms, the young hatchlings, they are the hardest to identify. So what I've been doing, if I have any doubt as to what a worm is, as I go through and separate a couple handfuls every day, I leave it in the container until I can identify it. So I've been adding the, the, the large ones in first. Okay, this is a banana that was put in here some time ago. It's still in here. And as you can see, it is being enjoyed. Very much so. I don't see. There are no flies. There are no mites. This is looking really good. Let's pull out one of our... This too is also not, not an adult. It's a eh, medium. I don't know. I would say this worm is probably about 50 days old. So that banana was way down deep. Let's see what else is in here because I think they're going to need a good feeding. I did put a really big pile of roots from weeds from my yard. And what you're seeing here is just the roots. They ate everything and they will eventually eat these roots but they do love they do love the weeds well weeds are greens i mean most of the things that we consider weeds in whatever our native area may be are grown and eaten in other places and you know lamb's quarter purslane um plantain creeping charlie all those things they're all Oh, look at this. They're all, they're all edible, so it's no different than lettuce to a worm. <laughs> Here's where I dumped a bunch of beans, and these were sprouts that were way down deep. And you got all these little worms nestled within. Now what I'll do is kind of shake off a little bit so I'm not squishing the worms. I'm just going to kind of break these break them in half so they they uh, break down a little bit quicker so I won't need as much food since these are all growing this one I'm gonna keep that's why I always do a good inspection like this before before I go in and feed and I hope you can see um, let me turn this Hope you can see the color of these castings and the quality. They're really nice. They're black, as they should be. They are damp, but not wet. Here's a uh, banana peel, a no, piece of a banana peel. You can see it's the, um, so what I started to say, it's mostly the big ones that I've added back in here, and they're clearly deep dwellers, but they've had a ton of babies already now you can see i squeeze it it stays i crumble it it crumbles that's what you want for your castings this black there's no insects there's no odor except a really nice nice earthy odor now i'm going to try to get um behind the bag here for a minute Move you and then move you back. Let's see if this will work. I don't have to bend over because this is really killing my back. Okay, let's try this. And I will know when I look at this video if this worked or not. Okay, so let's just get in here. Again, I hope you can see this. Here's a good amount of the worms. There's a little bit of bedding left. Not much. And what I've been doing with this bag so far, sorry, when my dogs bark like that, it means there's somebody here. It's usually a delivery person, but they will always bark. Um, 
what I've been doing with this, rather than just loading it up and adding the worms, I'm letting them completely finish everything in between and let it get as black as black goes. So, um, and then I add more. So that way when I do finally harvest this bag from the bottom, as it's designed to do, I'll have really nice black castings and I won't have any unfinished business in there. So it's working really well so far. As you can see, the worms are looking great. These are all very healthy. There's still thousands in my um, sorting bin. This looks like a piece of an old corn cob. That goes, that goes way back. This is looking really, really phenomenal here. Very, very pleased with the casting. Now let me get over here. It's a little bit drier than African nightcrawlers prefer, but they're going to get some food that has moisture, so won't be a problem. Hey, look, our comfrey root. <laughs> when the, before the urban worm bag collapsed and it was a everything bag, I had a comfrey root in there, and I did put it back in, and look at this. All these worms are piled around it. A green bean is growing through it, and, well, they're loving this. Look at this. These are juvenile Africans. These are, there's been a mass breeding frenzy going on in here. Lots of love going on in here, folks. There's another really, really pretty worms. It's interesting to me, because, you know, this, since it collapsed and revived, this is the first time I've had only African nightcrawlers in here, so I'm so used to when I pull out a handful of castings or bedding, whatever, checking the worms. Um, I'm so used to seeing, you know, every every worm type that I breed in here. And now I uh, this is really, you know, the beginning of me seeing the Africans only. And it's kind of cool to see a big handful of them in different ages and you know they're all the same color and shape and size well maybe not size but um you know in in perspective to what they should be rather than you know looking at all the worms I can compare the health of the individual Africans and I'm really really happy with what I'm seeing here and I'm very surprised that these sprouts um, that I had buried down at the bottom actually sprouted. Well, again, it doesn't take light for seeds to sprout. It takes um, proper medium, proper moisture, and that's it. Seeds are self-contained with their own fertilizer until they get their first set of true leaves. Uh, mine are beyond that because obviously if there's more food in this bag. This is like pure plant food uh, Here we get another really pretty one here. So yeah, I'm really I'm really happy with this. This looks like I don't know some some sort of food there's some things down low here that I'm not even recognizing so I don't know I Don't know what they are the bean sprouts if I don't break them up They'll continue to grow and grow. They'll grow sideways. They'll grow every which way. And there should be somewhere. Oh, look at this. I just broke open an avocado peel. And once again, the worms are loving it. What I like is the fact that so far, everything we've encountered are Africans only. I haven't seen a single other worm type which means my sorting skills so far have been accurate. It's making me insane, but it's accurate. Yeah, so I've been going through, I've got, I don't know, maybe 10 pounds of worms left. And I, <laughs> the situation is I've got them in a giant container all together and I grab a couple handfuls a day. I was spending a couple of hours a day, but when gardening season really kicked in, I just couldn't dedicate that time. And 
you know, I separate out the adult, the, the ones that are easily identifiable, which are most, go into the, a bin with that specific breed. Because I'm trying to get more pure, pure bins going. And the ones that are small stay in, or small, small and or unidentifiable stay in. I just put them back in the mixed bin because if I'm not positive what they are, I'm not putting them into anything. They're going back where they were. And um, the problem is there's so many adults in there that as fast as I can pull out some, <laughs> they're breeding. And let me tell you something, and I will do a video on this. The whole theory that if bins get too crowded, they don't breed, well, that's been blown away because this bin is worms to the top, to the sides, to, to the max. And they are breeding insane. There's not even room for them to move in there in their breeding. So, um, yeah, that's happening. So at some point, I'm just going to, you know, have separated as many as I'm going to separate and just throw the rest into mixed bins and accept it. But I still want more adult Africans in here. All right, so this has been mixed up really good. I'm on the back, and I hope this worked because this is a lot easier for me. Make sure I got everything down. This looks like this may be the same banana. No, this is a different banana. I forgot I had some bananas that were slated for banana bread, but that just never happened. So you know how it is. When something is too far gone, it goes to the worms. And, uh, yeah, so I picked a few snow peas, or sugar snap peas, I'm not sure. And I left them out, and they got really soggy, or kind of, I don't know, soft, whatever you want to call it, on my kitchen table. So I said, just for the heck of it, I'd throw them in here. But, of course, burying whole, whole anything, if it's not been frozen and isn't damaged, only allows, it, to, it seems it preserves it. I don't understand it. But the whole whole fruits and vegetables, or at least vegetables. When I was putting the weeds in here, the whole purslane, um, plantain plants, be before the leaves could even break down, more green ones would be coming out of the top, and it seems the leaves were only getting healthier. So now I, I kind of crushed the leaves just a little bit, my bird area. All right, this looks great. And I would say the only thing these worms need beyond me adding more worms is a bit of food. So I am going to go and get that. Okay, back. What I have here, this is about a four or five pound. This is a Kombota squash. It was organic. It was in my freezer. It's a squash or a pumpkin, or you can call a pumpkin a squash. Either way. And... I'm going to check. Um, unfortunately, all my pre-made bedding is out on my deck. I'm going to put this right there. I'm not going to cover it because I don't want to push worms onto something frozen because they'll stick like a tongue on a metal pole in the winter for those of you that live in the cold or have watched A Christmas Story. So before I bury this, I'm going to go outside and get some of my bedding and add some water and surround it in bedding. Um, I just wanted to show you. This is, this thing is solid. It is really solid. As you saw, there's some banana parts and peels. There's some avocado shells. There's a ton of green bean stalks. So this will last them a few days anyway. And I want to see actually once this thaws, because it's solid and it has no hole, how quickly they eat this. So we can keep an eye on that together, and I will do an update. Thank you for watching, everybody. Please remember to give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already a member. And thanks you to each and every one of you, because each viewer, each subscriber is the most important. And I appreciate that.